following is a Hoopball presentation. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, a Hoopball presentation. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochelani. And this episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Get yourself some delicious coffee from Hawaii. Taste the Kona difference. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com. You can also find their coffee at Amazon. Neil, how are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing all right. I um, my team had a had a really good night in that in that uh, uh, playoff. Both my playoff matches, so I'm feeling a little less like hopeless, which is good. <laughs> it's always good to feel like you're not out of it by day two. So. How are you doing tonight? How's everything going? We got four games that have completed. We have to get through. Um, anything up with you, fantasy basketball wise or reality wise? Everyone, everyone healthy there in the household? Everything okay? Every, man, everyone's finally healthy. Uh, it this season, this past winter season, has just been brutal. Like the kids have been sick more than they've been healthy. Uh, both kids are coming off of ear infections, which has just been it's just insane. And, um, I'm just happy they're like finally turning the corner. My son's completely over it. My daughter's like in the final days of like recovery. So, mm. um, everyone's finally healthy. Thank goodness. Spring is almost here, Neil. The, uh, the weather's getting warmer here in Southern. I mean, like it's been in the mid seventies <laughs> the past few days. It's been crazy, man. Yeah, I wish I could say that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just happy it's in the 40s here in Chicago. Um, uh, all right. Any basketball news and notes before we get into the games? Are you seeing anything? I got nothing. I got nothing either. Um, I mean, LeBron sad, but we can get to that when we get to the Lakers score. Um, yeah, not much else. Um, all right. Should we hop into the games? I believe it's your turn to lead us off. Let's do it. I hope that I'm going in order here. I'm going to start with the Sixers and the Hornets. Sixers getting the victory 118 to 114. I'm going to take a look at the Philly side. I'm going to start with, uh, you know, before I start, I'll say Joel Embiid out in this one. Neil, I believe it's rest if I'm, if I remember. So, uh, don't panic if you have Embiid. It is definitely a buzz kill to miss out on a game, though, because we know in one game he could put up some gaudy numbers. So disappointment, but hopefully he's back in the next one. So with him out, we saw some nice usage uh, bumps for Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler. Tobias had a nice game, 22 points, a steal, three assists, 11 boards, one three. He shot eight of 17 from the field, five of six from the line. Jimmy Butler with 23 points, two steals, a block, nine assists, four rebounds, one three. He shot eight of 19 from the field, six to six from the line. Man, just some huge numbers here, man. Uh, Ben Simmons with 28 points, two blocks of steal, five assists, eight rebounds. He was 11 to 12 from the field, six to 10 from the line. JJ Redick, man, flirting with the triple double, 27 points. Eight assists, 10 rebounds. He had seven threes tonight. What a line here from JJ Redick. Eight of nine, um, eight of 19 from the field, four of five from the line. Uh, Johnson got the start, but he only got four points in 17 minutes. Nobody I trust here on the bench at all. And, uh, as I said, hopefully we see Embiid back in the next one. What do you think of Philly, Neil? Yeah, it's too bad. He, um, sat tonight if you have him in your roster. In playoffs, especially, it's you know just two more games this week for him, Wednesday and Saturday. So you're losing a third of his value, unfortunately, and then three games next next week. So, yeah, no bench player is really worth streaming here, even if um, you're, you're looking for guys to play a lot of games um, with low minutes. It's not going to happen from Philadelphia. So, not much to count on. I mean, even Andrew, even um, Amir Johnson in the start didn't do much um, in 17 minutes. So. You can't um, even throw him in there when it beads out. So not much else to add on Philly. Good to see the rest of their guys are getting their um, distribution of points and assists and rebounds and everything else. 
On the Charlotte side tonight, uh, Kemba Walker, 21 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, led the starting unit here, had a steal as well as two three-pointers. Um, Nicholas Batum, quiet night here, 9 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist. You know, I own in the middle league. He's, they're having four games this week, so we'll see if that kind of balances out. He's been kind of hot and cold. Uh, Miles Bridges, someone I know that uh, we both like. 29 minutes tonight, 8 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists. Good to see that. And 2 steals. Getting 29 minutes especially. Uh, Marvin Williams has been struggling as of late. 23 minutes. I think, though, if you have him in your in your uh, weekly lineup, he's has 4 games. So I would trust him over someone who has 3 games that might be slightly better. Um, Jeremy Lamb had a great night off the bench. I own Jeremy Lamb in every single one of my leagues. So... <laughs> uh, this is one reason why I'm having a good night. 29 minutes, 26 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists on 6 of 11, shooting 11 of 12 from the line, 3 three-pointers. Um, just phenomenal. Uh, Bacon and Kaminsky played nice minutes off the bench and had some decent lines, but I am not trusting them. Gilchrist, I don't know if you saw this, he had a head injury. You know what? He might have banged up with Amir Johnson. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it was Amir Johnson who they butted heads uh, accidentally and both were like kind of knocked out. Um so, you know, if Amir Johnson is in the concussion protocol, maybe Mike Scott gets a look. He played 15 minutes tonight and fouled out, but that's a big um, only if Embiid's out. Uh, anyway, um, going back to Charlotte, not much else here to talk about. Uh, well, I should mention Biombo got the start at the center, 20 minutes, but no fantasy value, so not trusting him. And um, I wish there was someone to pick up here. We could stream. I don't see anything. Um, any thoughts? On uh, Charlotte, are you going to drop Marvin Williams if you own him? What, I mean, he's kind of really dropped off recently. Any thoughts on him or Charlotte in general? Oh, you know, funny you should ask that question. I do have a few shares of Marvin Williams, and um, it hasn't been pretty lately, man. So yeah, I might look to uh, see if I can. Uh, I might look to see who's available on the wire. See if there's a player that gives me maybe like three games for the rest of the week. You know, somebody that might be playing like, uh, I don't know if that's even possible. Well, yeah, if somebody's playing like Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, or like, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, I might look to drop Marvin Williams, Neil. He just, he just hasn't looked good lately. And as you said, man, I really wish there was somebody else that we could like run to pick up here. Um, but, uh, just don't really have a feeling that anybody is like a strong ad. So it's kind of a bummer. All right. Uh, shall we go to the next one? Let's do it. All right. Uh, next game I got up is the Rockets and the Hawks. This one was a bit of a blowout. The Hawks, I mean, I'm sorry, the Rockets getting the victory, 121 to 105. Going to take a look at the Houston side. Going to start with James Harden, 31 points, a steal, a block with 10 assists, 8 rebounds, 4 threes. He was 8 of 18 from the field, 11 of 12 from the line. That's outstanding. Um, Gordon did his thing, 12 points, 1 steal, 1 assist, 1 rebound, 4 threes. Uh, four of seven from the field. So every shot he took was from downtown. Chris Paul, you know, uh, this actually, this is a pretty nice line. 13 points, 11 assists, three steals, one rebound. He had two threes, shot four of 10 from the field, was three of four from the line. Clint Capella was feeling it tonight. He was shooting the lights out. 11 of 13 from the field for 26 points. He, uh, no blocks, which is a little bit of a buzz kill, but still had a steal and assist and 11 boards. So pretty good game from him. Um, you know, I want to get your thoughts on Daniel House mm. after, uh, I, I feel like this guy's just been s real sneaky. He's been playing pretty well. There's a ch chance he could still be uh, on the wire in a f quite a few leagues. So I don't know. Maybe this guy's worth an ad. I feel like he's consistently getting some minutes um, off of the bench and uh, had it go had it going from deep here tonight. Six of eleven from three point range for nineteen points. Two assists, three rebounds. He uh, was one of two from the line. Uh, not much else to talk about. Fareed, I don't trust. Rivers, Green, I don't trust any of these guys. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Rockets 
Yeah, House is the most interesting uh, guy here. He actually got scooped up in my 14-team league earlier, I think. Mm. Um, he's had the last like half dozen games have been very solid uh, going through his stat line. Um, at least 14 points in all those games. Um, uh, averaging maybe like one and a half assists, about f- three rebounds. Um, and then he's, he's knocking down at least three three-pointers a night. So it's it's been pretty tonight, six of them. Uh, the only thing is he's kind of a high turnover guy for his low use uh, for his lower usage, I should say. But um, it's not that bad. I, I think um, definitely streamable. They have four games this week. Obviously, you missed out on one. He played tonight, but if you can get him up for the last three games, and he can fit your, I think he's worth. I mean, I would probably drop Marvin Williams for him. Um, so there you go. Uh, there's an option. Perfect. If you need uh, those stats, for sure, he's a you know three and D guy. So um, yeah, I like him. On the uh, Atlanta side, let's see how uh, Rookie of the Year Trey Young did. Uh, 21 points, 4 rebounds, 12 assists, Adrian. You might have to change your vote. 6 of 13 shooting, <laughs> 2 three-pointers and a steal, 7 of something from the line. You know, he's been shooting pretty well back half of the season. This, this, I mean, he did have 7 turnovers, so if he's in your starting lineup, you're probably going to lose turnovers, but you're no longer going to lose field goal percent, which is good. Um, Kevin Herter, quiet night here. Another one of the young guns, uh, four points, uh, two of nine shooting, three rebounds, four assists. Like his future, it's just going to be up and down the rest of the season, though, here. Zero of six from three-point land, two steals and a block. John Collins is very consistent. 20 points, 10 rebounds, nine of 14 shooting. Uh, did not make a three-pointer. Uh, had one defensive stat, one steal. Torian Prince, um, 16 points. He was dropped in one of my leagues um, in 12-team league. I picked him right up um, to stream. 16 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 6 of 10 shooting, 4 three-pointers. Um, let's see. Off the bench, I think Bembry. If you really need um, kind of like a smattering of like low-end stats all across the board, he can usually do it. Tonight, no defensive stats, but he's usually good for a steal and a block. Uh, had 2 three-pointers, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, 14 points, 5 of 9 shooting. Um I think if you need to stream someone, I gotta see how many games. I don't know how many games Atlanta's playing off the top of my head, um, and I forgot to look that up. But I think if you're gonna stream anyone, it's gonna be uh, Bembry, who's probably not available. I mean, he's probably available. Excuse me. Um, any thoughts on the Hawks? Ah, uh, not m- really much for me to add. You pretty much covered everything. Um, I like to take on Bembry. I I think he's worth a stream. Uh, I mean, for nights like. Uh, tonight you know and as you said usually he's good for some defensive stats as well so um i think he could be a good stream and uh herder was playing pretty well so um I, i'm looking for him to bounce back in the next one and uh trey young hats off to trey young you know i've been really hard on that guy this year just because of my love for luca but man i i, I gotta be honest the future's bright for trey young and uh He's he's going to be a solid point guard in this league for sure. All right, uh, let's keep rolling. Let's go to I think the Warriors and the uh, Timberwolves were up next, and uh, the Warriors getting the victory one seventeen to one hundred seven. You know, I watched some of this game, and the Warriors actually had a big lead. I think they had like a. T- 20 point lead at some point so the timber was really uh fought their way back but but not enough to get the victory so i'm going to take a look at the warriors going to start with uh clay thompson who had 28 points to steal a block with four assists three rebounds he added four threes shot 11 of 21 from the field to two of four from the line kevin durant with 17 points a steal nine assists he had three threes shot seven of 13 from the field steph curry with 36 points two steals five assists three rebounds he shot he had eight threes was eight of 14 from downtown he was 12 of 21 from the field four of five from the line it's a good game from him uh draymond green you know even though the scoring was really low just so like a really low usage rate on the offensive end i still love the fact man that he gave you four blocks a steal nine assists with 10 rebounds so uh i don't even care that he only gave you five points because that's some great production in those other uh, categories bogut you know a guy that we talked about didn't really have it going in this one also maybe i don't know maybe he had a little foul trouble i do he he had three thousand thirteen minutes so i don't know maybe they just 
we're playing better without him in this one. Um, I think Bogut should be much better than this and might be worth a look uh, in some deeper leagues. Um, nobody off the bench that I trust or that I would uh, play. Jarebko did have a nice po- game, 18 points in 18 minutes. But, man, uh, the chance of him doing that again, I think, is uh, – very rare. Neil, what do you think of the Warriors? Uh, yeah, yeah, him doing that again is like the chance of Yale winning the NCAA <laughs> tournament. Um, but, um, <laughs> we'll see. If the Bulldogs can do it. Um, anyway, I like what you said about, um, uh, Draymond Green. We often, I often get fixated on points too, and he does, he's a plus in every other category tonight. Except, well, his percentages are a little bit off, but uh, all the other categories are great. I will say, um, Bogut, it's so interesting. They're on a back to back. I don't think, I mean, Cousins rested again, but for Bogut to play two nights in a row, um, I mean, I guess he's in game shape. I mean, that's only 13 minutes. He did get in foul trouble. Maybe he fouled intentionally to get out of there. Um, anyway, it, it is reported that Cousins is expected back next week or next, excuse me, next game, which is Thursday. So Bogut, any value you thought you may get from him um, will disappear then whenever Cousins is starting. Um, all right. Uh, on the Timberwolf side, uh, another – Great night from Carl Anthony Towns. 26 points, 21 rebounds, 4 assists. Adrian, this guy is – I mean, they never shut him down. I, He's got to be this – The I own him in two leagues. I am so happy. Um, two three-pointers, one steal. Um, the seven turnovers were bad, but, you know, when you have those kind of lines, you just kind of chalk it up. Um <laughs> Uh, Saraj got 28 minutes. Um, I think that might be one of his high watermarks, uh, in terms of minutes. Not much though in fantasy value, so we're not gonna count on him. Wiggins back in, um, full rotation if there's any doubt. 41 minutes tonight, 20 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. Tyus Jones, I thought he might have a decent night tonight with, um, the Warriors coming off a of back to back. Uh, 10 points, 4 rebounds. He really struggled shooting 3 of 14, so not a great night at all. The only thing he helped you with was, uh, excuse me, were assists and free throws, four for four. Uh, Akoji, 30 minutes, um, 19 points, four rebounds, one assist. I really don't trust him, though. Did have three steals and three threes. So you can certainly look at him as a potential 3 and D guy. I just think this is um, the best you're going to get. Uh, Tolliver, 19 minutes tonight, not much to speak out. Bayless, 16 minutes. Uh, Bates, Diop, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Uh, 14 minutes. I think it's French. Is it French? I have no idea. Anyway, it sounds French. Um, I am going to say if you need to stream somebody here that's available, Tyus Jones, if he's out there, I think is going to be starting the rest of the season. I think Teague is shut down. Hasn't been official yet as far as I know, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. And then um, maybe a Koji if you're very desperate. Any thoughts on the Timberwolves? I love your take on Tyus Jones. I picked him up in a few leagues. But, Neil, the last game, he put up an atrocious shooting line. Yes. I want to say off the top of my head he was like 0-7. So I was nervous to play him tonight. I was like, I want to see him put up a good game before I move him back to my lineup. And, you know, this is encouraging. He's getting big minutes with both Rose and Teague out. The usage is definitely there. I mean, he took 14 shots tonight. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to get hot. I definitely think he needs to be owned just for the opportunity. And also because I do think he's a good player. I think he's he's going to be a starting caliber point guard in this league one day. Um so, yeah, I definitely think he's worth a pickup. And this is still an encouraging line. The shot wasn't falling, but seven assists, four boards. Um, he's going to have better games than this. So definitely grab him. Uh, man, just some good games. Akoji played well. Sarik, who I dropped. You know, this is a pretty decent line from him. The shooting's still not great, but still a decent line. So, um, you know, if you're optimistic, maybe take a shot on some of these guys in deeper leagues. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Neil, as you said, me just jumping on to what you said. What a stud this guy is. Just incredible. Congratulations for uh, having him on your team, man. <laughs> I, I think I, I know you traded for him in one league. What a great trade that was, man. Um, all right. Uh, where are we going next? How about the Lakers and the Bucks? Uh, one of the worst teams against 
Uh, I think the Bucks have the best record in the NBA. I should, you know, I should probably look this stuff up, but I do believe I heard earlier today that the Bucks have the best record in the NBA. So, um, you know, not a surprise to see them get the win 115 to 101. I'm going to take a look at the Lakers. Wah, wah. Uh, Rondo, you, Rondo, here we go. Uh, seven turnovers sucks, but 13 points, two steals, 10 assists, six rebounds. One of five, you know, no LeBron in this one. So Rondo got some extra offense, some extra shots. He took 16 shots in this game, made six of them. So uh, maybe, you know, if LeBron continues to rest or whatnot, maybe we see Rondo kind of get an uptick and a boost in usage. Uh, Kuzma with 17 points, a steal, three assists, five rebounds. He had two threes, four of 17 shooting. So not great shooting. Uh, he was seven to 10 from the line. JaVale McGee, six points, two blocks, 11 boards. He was 3-7 from the field. Reggie Bullock, you know, this guy's still not really popping yet. And uh, 13 points, an assist, two rebounds, three threes on three of five shooting, four of four from the line. Muscala got the start but only had two points in 11 minutes. I don't trust him. Uh, if you streamed Caldwell Pope, congratulations, 35 points, Two steals, a a block, three rebounds, one assist. He had he was eight of fourteen from three point range, twelve of twenty from the field, three of four from the line. So pretty good game from KCP. Uh, Hart, uh, you know, for the low minutes, I guess this is a decent line: six points, two assists, three rebounds. But I've given up on Hart. It's just not happening. I've given up on Mo Wagner. Um, just, I just don't trust any of these bench guys. Uh, Ingram's done for the season. Ball's done for the season. We see LeBron resting. The tank is on in LA. What do you think of the Lakers, Neil? Well, this is where laziness pays off sometimes. Um, I am streaming Caldwell Pope mainly because I had him last week for the four game week and, um, I didn't make any moves and he went bananas tonight. Um, he has that potential, but this is definitely the best game I think I've ever seen him play in terms of production. Um, yeah, you know, uh, LeBron sat tonight. Uh, when we get to the other side, Giannis sat tonight. So not really if you're a fan. And you imagine if you, uh, like, bought one game in your entire season and you're like, I'm going to go see LeBron wow. play Giannis. And both of them sat. Oh. This would this would kill me. Anyway. Brutal. I Brutal. know. Um, but uh, Middleton had a good night. Yeah, it's just going to be when Giannis is out, all these other guys are going to step up. And you're going to see like Lopez. I mean, gosh, not Lopez. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, you're going to see guys like Rondo have bigger nights and Kuzma um, has a solid night. And then Caldwell Pope takes 20 shots. So uh, Bullock, I thought tonight he'd also uh, maybe take more than five shots, you know, in, in, with this uh, role uh, starting at the wing with with LeBron out. But didn't happen. Um Anyway, any anyone who is uh, streaming uh, Andrew uh, or Alex Caruso after two great games he came back down to earth, unfortunately, and did not do anything. Um, I'm going to move over to the Milwaukee side. Nothing really to talk about here except the Lakers do have um, just two more games this week, I believe. So Friday, Sunday, if you're streaming Milwaukee, um, like I said, Giannis sat, which meant um, Brooke Lopez went crazy. Twenty eight points, nine rebounds. This is like a Nurk alert. Three assists. Five three pointers, three steals, four blocks. Um, just having the night of the of the uh, fantasy evening. Uh, Miritich starts, plays twenty four minutes, twenty three points, six rebounds, one assist, uh, three three pointers. You know he's going to jack up a bunch. He took seven tonight. Middleton shots are, are falling again. Four three pointers, thirty points, ten rebounds, five assists. Um, Bledsoe has a solid night. Fourteen points, eight rebounds, seven assists, five. Uh, that goes five attempts on the line, though. That hurts. One three-pointer, four steals, four turnovers. Connaughton gets 36 minutes. He might be the one guy to look at streaming, I think, down the stretch if you need to stream a buck, um, if that comes into your purview. Um, let's see here. He has gotten 36, 25, 25, 24, and 25 minutes. So he's getting mid-20 minutes the last five games. Um, and stats are decent. So... He's a streaming option down the stretch. I think if anyone here, certainly I would not touch Tony Snell despite his uh, starting role. 
And um, that's the only, uh, I guess, advice here. And if Lopez somehow is out there, obviously pick him up, which I doubt he is. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Bucks? Yeah, Lopez has been playing great, man. What a what a great addition to this team that Lopez is. He's just and and just uh, uh, really shooting well from three point range. Five threes tonight, man. It's just uh, it's it still trips me out to see how much his game has changed from his days in Brooklyn. And um, man, what a bummer to miss out on Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's like, Neil, like one of the most important weeks of the, of the fantasy season. And we're missing games from Embiid and LeBron and Giannis. And it's like, oh man, it's uh, like we've seen Kawhi get rest days. It's like such a bummer to miss games from your like stud uh, you know, your best player on your roster at the most important time of year, but hang in there. Hey, Giannis had a 52 point crazy <laughs> line the other night, so he could easily make up for this missed game in the next one. So just hang in there, guys. Um, and, uh, well, let's see, what else can I add about Milwaukee? Just, uh, I mean, you and I, Neil, we say it all the time, very well-rounded team, deep. They got like five guys on who can put up good fantasy numbers. So just a really great team. And uh, that's it, man. I think that's all I got. Uh, oh, yeah. We should mention the, Bro- the Brogdon, you know, he's out for the season or he's least out until uh-huh. the rest of the regular season. So, yeah, so that's why Snell's in there. And But I think content is a streaming option. And I think they have three more games this week, uh, which I can double check. So, I think they're on a back to back. I think they're playing tomorrow again and then again um Friday, Sunday. So mm, which is probably why we saw uh no onto Tacupo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think he's got to rush up for Cleveland tomorrow. Tough match up there. So <laughs> 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 they play Cleveland two out of the next three games. Oh, they they are man. the number one team, by the way, and they are not just gonna win the um they're gonna they have to really screw up not to win the entire to, to lead the uh, league in record so they will have yeah they will have home court advantage yes. even if they face the warriors if 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 it holds up as yes. it is that you know what that is a so big with toronto and uh, toronto's yeah. actually higher than warriors too but barely that, that wow gets um yeah yeah milwaukee interesting yeah Milwaukee. Very. who i mean who saw this coming this year <laughs> no. right like we all we all thought it was going to be the celtics maybe the raptors when they added a uh, collide during the summer right so i mean nobody really thought that the bucks would just be killing everyone this is th- this is great oh by the way i'm hearing a lot of buzz that like giannis has mvp pretty much locked up too so oh interesting um yeah, uh, just on sports, like I've been listening to a lot of ESPN radio. They're yeah. all saying it's pretty much a given that, uh, you know, with the Bucks having the best record, him playing just lights out every night. You know, right. the other, the other argument is too, cause Harden is probably the other guy. Giannis, a two way player plays really good defense while right. Harden, not quite the two way player that, uh, Giannis is. So. I don't know, Neil. Yeah, we might nah. see uh, an MVP there. I think we will. I, just because I think Harden won it last year, too. I think people are less likely to give it to him again when someone's had is an equal season, if not better, than him. So, yeah. I would. We, you and I both talked about Giannis early on, and then Harden went on that crazy like scoring streak, and we start, at least I paused a little bit there. But, yeah, I think it's, it's Giannis. Um, all right. Um, that's it for the games that are completed. Uh, pretty short first four games. But – we are going to leave, but Mr. Brandon Marcus is back for his second appearance to do the last two West Coast games of the evening. Um, I listened to him last time. Like I said, Adrian, you know what's really, really sad is when like you do this for a year and someone comes on right away and you're like, <laughs> this guy's just better than me. So anyway, that's, that's the case. He's a uh, professional broadcaster, and you can tell right away when you listen to him. Um, any last thoughts before we sign off? Uh, just thanks again, you guys, for listening, supporting the show. This this week is flying by. We got one more night uh, tomorrow, so we will be back. Thank you so much. Hey, hit us up on Twitter. He's at Ball with Neil. I'm at Adrian Benjamins, and uh, Brandon Marcus will be back for the rest of the games. Thank you, guys. All right, fellas, appreciate it. Let's break down some West Coast box scores: Brooklyn and Sacramento, one twenty three, one twenty one final. If you're just looking at that box score, you say, hey, man, what a nice, balanced ball game. Brooklyn and Sacramento, two good ball clubs going at it. Well, not exactly the case. Just look at that fourth quarter. Brooklyn 45, 
Sacramento 18, D'Angelo Russell 27 of his 44 points came in the fourth quarter as he single-handedly led Brooklyn back and beat the Sacramento Kings in Sacramento. A heck of a win for Brooklyn. Obviously, D'Angelo Russell is a star in this one. 44 points, 4 rebounds, 12 assists, and 4 steals. The only unfortunate thing is that Brooklyn only plays one more time this week. So if you don't have D'Angelo Russell and you own other Brooklyn assets, uh, for me, they're drops. It's as simple as that. I, I have Jared Allen in one of my leagues, and I am dropping him uh, to have somebody that's going to play three games in four days. And there's lots of teams that will do that from Thursday to Sunday. So that's unfortunate, obviously. They only play one more game. Uh, my goal, obviously, is to get to the finals. And I'll figure it out once I get to the finals. And I realize that once you drop someone like Jared Allen or you drop somebody like Lavert, you drop somebody like maybe Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, who you want to stream, then next week, what are you going to do? Well, Brooklyn only plays three games next week. So nothing really to be worried about. Um, and Jared Allen, one of those guys that really is prone to a dud. In today's game, 13 points, 7 rebounds. He did have a steal and a block. 5 of 8 from the field, 3 of 3 from the free throw line. I like that, obviously, I like that line, but he only played 21 minutes. He was not part of that comeback in the fourth quarter. So, for me, Jared Allen is a drop, and he's one of those guys that I'm sure everybody owns. I think the other guys that people own, Joe Harris, you own him for the threes. He only played 20 minutes tonight, 9 points, 3 rebounds. He's also a drop for me. Um, he did have two steals, which was nice. Lavert, six points, three rebounds, six assists. He's a guy that you want to keep an eye on for next year. Um, obviously, he's still coming back from his injury. Not a guy that's going to give you full value uh, the rest of the way, at least in my opinion. Rondé Hollis Jefferson did have the game winning basket. Um, nice layup, actually. Uh, great take from the top of the key all the way to the hoop. 14 points, five rebounds, three assists for him, two steals, and a block. Six of seven from the field. He's been too inconsistent to trust, though. Um, and Dinwiddie. Only 10 points, which is a major disappointment in 24 minutes. So if you're playing him for your two games, a rough start for that two-game week. 10 points, three assists, one of four from three. Um, not a great line from him at all. And I was worried about D'Angelo Russell with Dinwiddie coming back. But, boy, 17 of 33 for Russell. My goodness, you'll take that. Uh, from the Sacramento side, a lot more fantasy assets, I think, in this one. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, 27 points, four rebounds, nine assists, and a steal. He was 10 of 20 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3, 5 of 7 from the line. Very solid. Um, he's been producing all year. Really like what I see from him. Marvin Bagley was actually a free agent in my league once he got dropped, um, once he got hurt. And I immediately added him because I had a bye last week. And it worked out because he was 12 of 15 from the field. He started off making, I think, 11 of his first 12 shots. Uh, 28 points, 7 rebounds, 2 steals. He also stepped back and hit two threes. Two of two from the line. Um, sit back and enjoy the ride because Sacramento does have three more games this week. They'll be versus Dallas on Thursday, versus Phoenix on Saturday, and at the Lakers on Sunday. So they play three games in four days. That is a team you want to target going down the stretch here because they do have four games this week, including the one they just wrapped up, and then four games next week. They'll play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday next week. So I really do like the Sacramento Kings. They have a great playoff schedule. You may be wondering, well, what about Belisa? Do we, uh, do we like him? 14 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal. He played 28 minutes, so I'm not mad at it. I do think Bagley eventually will re-enter the starting lineup, and that'll hurt him a little bit, because if you look at Willie Cauley-Stein, he only played 19 minutes today. Um, part of that is because Bagley played some center minutes and stole those away from Willie Cauley-Stein. Played 19 minutes, 7 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals. Not a bad line for Willie Cauley-Stein. But not a line, obviously, that you would like to see with the 19 minutes. So I'm fine with Belisa, uh, especially since he has three games in four days. I'm okay with that. Harrison Barnes, I'm also okay streaming. I think there's a lot of fringe guys that could be sitting on your waiver wire. So I'm good with Belisa. I'm good with Barnes. I'm good with Willie Cauley-Stein. Heald and Fox are already taken. Um, and if Bagley, for some reason, is still sitting around... Um, go ahead and grab him right now. I mean, if you have four pickups this week, I don't care if you have three pickups this week, he should be a priority add right now. So I think that covers the uh, Brooklyn-Sacramento game. Brooklyn really, I don't want to spend too much time on because, frankly, they only play one more time this week. And if you don't have D'Angelo Russell, like I said, I think everybody is a drop on that team. Go ahead and maximize the games. One thing that I did talk about on Fantasy NBA Tonight with Hank on Monday is that 
Um, Sunday is a day where a lot of teams play. So if you're going to add somebody thinking, okay, they have three games in four days, including that game on Sunday, make sure you have the roster spot for that guy to come in. Don't just add him because he plays on Sunday and then realize, oh, crap, he's going to be sitting on my bench. I don't have a spot for him. Because for me personally, I have two guys currently sitting on the bench for Sunday, and I don't have room for them. <clears throat> so just be careful, okay? All right, so now the final game, Clippers and Pacers. Clippers wrap up a 115-109 win. A uh, very impressive season for Doc Rivers' team. Obviously very unexpected for the Clippers to do this well. It's now eight seasons, I believe, in a row where the Clippers are going to be 500 or better. Um, and that's just me as a Clippers fan saying that. But let's go let's break down the box score. Indiana. Tyreek Evans, 19 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists in 29 minutes. Do I trust him? No. He has not been good the last couple of games until tonight. I think it's just a matter of him getting hot down the stretch. He had 19. So did Bogdanovich. He also had 19 points to go along with 5 rebounds, 2 assists. Also two threes for Bogdanovich. Um, 17 points for Doug McDermott. Another guy that I don't really care for. Sabonis. He's been really good. Uh, I'm okay with him. He's been very solid this season. 13 points, 16 rebounds. Six assists for him in 28 minutes. Uh, Wes Matthews, 12 points, two rebounds, four assists, five of 12 from the field. If you need threes, he usually helps you. He was 0 for 4, though, tonight from there, which is really a killer, and he only had one steal. Uh, Miles Turner, 11 points, five rebounds. He dominated against Portland last night, so you were hoping for another good game. Well, look at that blocks. Five. You'll gladly take that. I think he had four in the third quarter. And that really helped his line a lot. 26 minutes for him. So to see him get 11 and 5 with 5 blocks in just 26 minutes, boy, you'll absolutely take that. Thad Young, 9.7 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 4 of 8 from the field, including a 3 in 31 minutes. Uh, Indiana's a team that only has 2 more games. They'll be at Golden State on Thursday and versus Denver on Sunday. So you should see um, some high-scoring games. However, it is a very tough stretch now for Indiana. We're going to see if they're able to hold on to that spot in the East because they have Golden State, Denver, Oklahoma City, and then Boston. Very tough four games coming up. But this is a team that you really can stream. I'm happy doing so. It's just it's very difficult to stream them since they're going Thursday and Sunday. You don't really want to hold those guys when you have plenty of teams playing three games in four days from Thursday to Sunday. Um, and then they don't play again until Wednesday. I'm okay streaming them next week maybe, Friday and Saturday. Uh, but just be careful of your pickups and what you need. This is a team that has some guys on the bench that do switch off night to night. You do like if you're Indiana and you own some guys there. They only go really four deep off the bench, and Holiday doesn't really count. So Evans, McDermott, Sabonis, I don't really care for Evans, like I said. Um, same with McDermott, even though he was good tonight. Sabonis, Miles Turner, uh, Thad Young, good with all of them. Uh, no Darren Collison tonight, so that's one thing that obviously is worth noting. Uh, Corey Joseph got the start, and he was not good. Five points, four assists. He did get four steals in the three in 20 minutes, so you'll take that. Um, that's obviously why Tyreek Evans was so good, by the way. So if Collins, Collison is to miss more time, then that's definitely something you can monitor. Um, but just just be careful with injuries, obviously. That's something that is important. In this stretch is you don't know who's going to be hurt, who's going to play. Just keep an eye on that. Hoopball does a really good job of posting those updates. Make sure you follow them on Twitter or check out the website as well. Um, Collison, by the way, is dealing with a right quad contusion. Popped up on the injury report with a doubtful tag. So perhaps he's out on Thursday as well. So maybe if you want assists and steals, Corey Joseph can be the guy. But Tyreek Evans is probably the one you want to add um, if you do want to stream for just one game then uh, I'm okay with doing Tyreek Evans with Collison out. So, like I was mentioning, the numbers haven't been good for Evans, but that was with Collison in the lineup. Now, for the Clippers, it is a team that you do not know who's going to pop off from night to night apart from Gallo, Harrell, and Lou. And Gallo was great tonight, 24 points, 8 of 17, 4 of 9 from 3. Montrez Hill, 20 points, 12 rebounds. Lou Williams actually wasn't that great from the field, 4 of 14. He missed all five of his threes, and he was also 3 of 5 from the line. And it's a guy that's normally automatic from the line, so it's not great, but he did have nine assists and two steals. So he's done something that Jamal Crawford did not do with the Clippers last year off the bench, um, and that was, go, or two years ago rather, and that was pass the ball. And uh, you'll see nine assists for him. You'll gladly take that if you're a Lou owner. 
Zubats, 12 points, 9 rebounds, 4 of 6 from the field, 4 of 4 from the line. Did have 5 turnovers, which you don't like to see for your center. Um, but that's fine, obviously. A fine stream for today. Shea Gilgis-Alexander has been very good recently. If that's somebody that piques your interest, go ahead and add him. Because he'll give you points, he'll give you rebounds, he'll give you assists, he'll give you steals. Uh, might give you a block or two. He didn't have any tonight, but he did have two steals. Six of nine from the field. He's starting to shoot the ball really well, and he's getting more minutes again under Doc. He went through a stretch where he was not playing well, and he was not getting minutes. But I like Shea a lot. So he is someone that I am very happy adding. The Clippers the rest of the way. They'll play at Cleveland on Friday. They'll play at the Knicks on Sunday. So I get it's only two games in three days. But that being said, there are guys like Shea Gildas Alexander that I'm good adding um, to stream. And also, Landry Shamit has been a good three-point specialist. He was 2 of 8 today, 2 of 7 from 3. Um, someone actually added him to play against me, and I was pretty happy about that. Because apart from the threes, he's not going to do much. And he needs to get really hot in order to actually help you. But Zubots is a guy that maybe I want to look at. Because Cleveland does not do a good job against bigs. Um, and New York, DeAndre Jordan, is he going to play? Mitchell Robinson, is he going to stay on the court? So it's worth taking a look at Zubots if you need some points and rebounds and maybe some block shots as well. But I would assume guys like Beverly and Montrez Harrell and Lou Williams and Gallo, obviously they're all gone. Uh, maybe Beverly still floating around. I don't know why he would be, but he's giving you points, rebounds, assists, and steals. Ten points, four rebounds, five assists, and three steals tonight in 31 minutes and three, two threes as well. So uh, apart from the main guys... Shea Gilgis Alexander, Shamit, and Zubots. Um, I think I would rate it. Probably Shea, Zubots, Shamit, Shamit. But I'm not really excited about any of them, to be honest. Um, use your ads well and just see what you need. If you need rebounds, Zubots could be a guy. If you need someone who's going to get you points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, not a ton of everything, but will contribute, then sure, Shea's a good option. So I think that wraps things up. Indiana and the Clippers. And then, of course, we had Brooklyn and Sacramento. So, appreciate you guys listening. Uh, been fun. And we will be back again, at least I will be, next Tuesday on the Box Score Breakdown. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.